Swords of Renown are the objects of many mystical, heroic, and even tragic legends. Fueled by tales of bloodshed and conquest, stories about various swords throughout history have grown to fantastical proportions, combining fact and fiction until the two are indistinguishable. In ancient Japan, swords were regarded as the soul of the samurai and symbolized a samurai's power and prowess. To the samurai, the possession of this dangerous instrument instills a feeling and air of self-respect and responsibility. Carrying the physical sword is symbolic of what the samurai upholds in his mind and heart, loyalty and honor. And because these weapons were placed in such high regard, so were the swordsmiths that forged them. The esteem placed on Japan's ancient swordsmiths was so tremendous that some of them, at one point or another, became as widely acclaimed, if not more so, than as the samurai wielding their creations. And among the greatest and most legendary of Japan's swordsmiths was Muramasa Sengo. Muramasa Sengo lived and pursued his sword-making craft during the Muromachi period between the 14th and 15th century in feudal Japan's Issei province in the Kuwana town. He founded the Muramasa school and passed down his sword-making art and style to students. This legacy continued for 200 years. Both Muramasa and his sword-making school were known for their extraordinary quality and sharpness of the blades, making their weapons greatly prized and highly sought after by warriors and generals in the early 1500s. Muramasa was an incredible swordsmith to the point that people regarded him as one of the finest swordsmiths who have ever lived. Although he had an incredible talent, he was also known to have a troubled mind. Aside from the quality and sharpness of his swords, he also gained notoriety for his rather volatile nature, and some believed a dark curse or evil spirit emanates from his weapons. The Curse of the Muramasa Blades The rumors regarding the supposed curse of the Muramasa Blades mainly originated from the abrasive and venomous personality of Muramasa himself. Besides being a brilliant swordsmith, he supposedly sometimes went insane, bursting into violent rages and lashing out at whoever was nearby. This unbalanced mind bordering on complete madness, a relentless drive for perfection, and a violent passion for crafting deadly swords gave birth to weapons possessing his genius, intense determination, and insane bloodlust. Muramasa's swords were said to have a life of their own. There are tales claiming that the swordsmith had made a deal with the devil to make the deadliest and most powerful weapons. Aside from that, Muramasa allegedly had the habit of whispering a prayer to the gods so his swords would become the greatest destroyers. The swords created by Muramasa were believed capable of possessing their wielders and pushing them beyond the brink of murderous rage. Stories say these swords boost swordsmanship, grant super strength, and the ability to resist damage and even pain. The cursed Muramasa swords are believed to thirst for blood, and if they're not satisfied with enough blood from enemies, they would turn on their owner, forcing them to commit suicide for appeasement. If a Muramasa blade was drawn, that sword would ruthlessly demand blood before it could be placed back in its scabbard, which meant almost certain doom for the wielder if no one else was around for the weapon to unleash its bloodlust upon. There are also claims that sheathed Muramasa swords would call to be unleashed and compel their masters to kill. Although the Muramasa swords were irrefutably effective weapons proving reliable in battle, the dark curse surrounding them allegedly made these weapons just as dangerous for its wielders and for those around them. The swords were believed to hardly discriminate between friend and foe, using their owners merely as instruments to help them kill people, even the wielders' allies, friends, and family. It was also quite common to hear about owners of Muramasa swords going insane, with their minds being twisted or destroyed by the demonic will of the weapons. Sometimes these warriors ended up killing themselves to escape the curse and the madness that came with the swords. The banning of Muramasa blades. Even with the evil reputation of the Muramasa blades, the swords remained popular in Japan, with Muramasa Sengo's school of sword making enduring for the next 200 years. It was only during the reign of Tokugawa Iyasu, the first shogun of the last feudal government in Japan, that Muramasa's blades fell out of favor. The shogun believed that the Muramasa swords were cursed, and blamed them for the demise of many of his allies, friends, and relatives. The shogun's father, Matsudaira Hirota, as well as his grandfather, Matsudaira Kiyoyashu, were apparently both cut down by their retainers who were in a murderous trance while wielding these swords. Tokugawa even claimed that he was also cut by a Muramasa katana that was carried by one of his samurai guards while he was inspecting the ranks. His own wife and adopted son were also allegedly executed using a Muramasa sword. These gave rise to the legend that Muramasa blades possessed the curse and power to kill members of the Tokugawa family. As a result of this, the 
Shogun decided to ban the ownership of Muramasa blades. Many of them were melted down, but some were also hidden away. The Shogun took the ban so seriously that those who were caught in possession or keeping the Muramasa blades were punished severely. One notable case was that of Takanak Ume, the magistrate of Nagasaki. In 1634, the magistrate was found to have hoarded as many as 24 Muramasa blades. And because of this, he was ordered to commit seppuku, a ritual suicide by disembowelment. Despite the harsh punishments imposed on those who were caught to be in possession of the Muramasa swords, there were those who insisted on keeping their blades, even going so far as to change the markings on the blades to avoid detection from authorities. And because these swords were thought to have a special affinity for killing members of the Tokugawa family, there was also a heightened demand for the Muramasa blades among the shogun's enemies. Thus, for profit, lesser swordsmiths made fakes, and today it's difficult to verify the authenticity of surviving Muramasa blades. So, were the Muramasa blades really cursed with a bloodthirsty evil spirit, or were the stories just a byproduct of their crazed popularity back then? Were the violence and killings really the fault of the swords alone, or was it the warrior's own thirst for power? Nevertheless, Muramasa blades today still embody the superior Japanese sword making skills and are present in today's pop culture. Magical and powerful weapons based on these legendary swords are even found in many Asian medias from video games to anime and even Western Marvel comics.